Hello everybody, this is Dr. Ali McGavill and now we cover path loss, shadowing and multipath. Radio wave propagation is governed by Maxwell equations. Maxwell equations, as we all know, has a lot of mathematical details and double integration and, and uh, all these we cover in electromagnetic courses and they are beyond the scope of what we want to do here, keeping things simple. So we'll assume that we receive the signal in the far field. The far field will, will make the wave look like plane waves. For example, if you look at this diagram, we have a source that radiates okay, in that direction. If you are very close here, you get a curved signal or wave. As you go away from the antenna, the receiver antenna will, will observe a plane wave as we go away from the antenna. And that's the far field assumption that you are far enough not to see the curvature of, of the wave. Far field radiation pattern, which requires that the distance be much greater than a given distance. This distance is usually related to the dimension of the antenna and the wavelength. So for example, in the case of half wave dipole, we're just taking this half wave linear dipole antenna as an example. The wavelength is lambda over two. We call it half wave because the length LA is related to the half wave and it's a dipole, two poles. So given the dimension LA of the antenna, we can find how much far we have to be to, to, to assume far field. Now, of course, for this kind of antenna, there is a radiation pattern, as you can see. This donut shape will become larger and larger as we go away until things look like uh, plane waves. So going from Maxwell equations, which are complicated, we'll assume plane field, and then we have the, we'll be using the simplified two-ray or a ray based model. We assume that the signal travel in rays. Radio wave propagation. We can think of the three main types of propagations or phenomena that occur in, during propagation reflection, scattering, and diffraction. If you look at the following object, for example, we get reflection, the signal gets reflected, or we can get transmission so this signal part of the signal will be transmitted through and if your surface is rough then we get what we call scattering the signal will be scattered around or we get diffraction at the edges or sharp uh, edges where the signal will get diffracted it, it kind of changed direction we are seeing this zoomed in version here reflection scattering and diffraction diffraction occurs at the edges so the edges will re-radiate again reflection occurs in smooth surface transmission occurs on uh, or through the objects and scattering uh, occurs on rough surfaces diffraction on the sharp edges so smooth rough large small are all relative to the wavelength and we have Remember, we have loss or n loss. We have line of sight and we have null line of sight. Line of sight that you can think of the receiver uh, has no, uh, can see the transmitter without any obstacles. So this is why line of sight is necessary for, for good communication, but it's not a must. We can still go through all systems. We can, we can get transmission or uh, other paths. So line of sight is not necessary for communication. Uh, remember that as we increase the frequency, then we get more of optical propagation. Remember a light, if you get any object, you get um, the light not to go through any, ob any uh, back object or object that, uh, that's not transparent. So as you increase the frequency, you get more of kind of optical communication. The antenna size becomes smaller but the higher the path loss becomes higher. So in general, low frequency allows more or better propagation if you want to make things simple. High frequency requires a line of sight and requires smaller antenna, which is good, but it has higher path loss. Now let's summarize these phenomena that we mentioned in terms of the environment, a complex environment. 
when we have a transmitter and we have a receiver so the following diagram shows you the, as we travel in distance or if you like time and then this is the received power relative to the transmitted power if we had only path loss then the signal will decay with 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 distance so as the car travels the, the power received will be less and less that's slow relatively slow uh, decay over in real life we could also have obstacles obstacles can get in and can and get, uh, get out of our way so there will be some variation on top of this blue curve not only that this is referred to as shadowing because you will be in the shadow of the obstacle so shadowing is called caused by blockage or obstruction where multiple where path loss is just uh, is just the average of power decay due to distance and path loss includes the average shadowing so if there are small shadowing in and out this would be included on because this is the average the variation of the shadowing is captured here in the in the red curve now we have a third phenomena which is multi-path multi-path is a result of uh, the fact that the signal will not just go on to one path so one is direct another reflected we get the superposition if you look at uh, how multi-path interact we could have a direct path and we have uh, the received signal will be just direct path a reflected signal you can see that it could be phase shifted it could be in phase so in this scenario on the left the direct path and the reflect curve are adding up constructively so on the right hand which is unfortunately many many times the case the direct path and the reflected path they are out of synchronization they are not in phase so they even could add destructively and multipath is in general cause uh, bad effect so we have left scenario and we have the right scenario this is unfortunately usually the case so now we can have this variation because of the multipath on top of the two signals on top of the two curves so we end up with the green curve variation this is just a rough sketch because of the fact that we have path loss and then shadowing and then which is a slow variation relative and then we have these fast variations which is, which are due to multipath so mathematically now we can add them up by saying the path the received signal level in milliwatts is the transmitted power in milliwatts plus of course these will have negative uh, but we, we need to add them up but they will have negative uh, values so the path loss shadowing and multipath so this could be added up in the following curve also shown this is by the way the, the distance and if you make it log distance you'll find that the will have a linear curve and this is the path loss shown in the, in the first of the line and then we have the slow variations which is showing the path loss shadowing and path loss together and finally we have for the multipath because it occurs uh, relatively fast relative to the wavelength because it's function of the wavelength you can see that we have the final result that shows everything and this solid line is representing the true received power relative to the transmitted power as function of log distance so how do we model this we know that path loss is deterministic or we are going to represent it deterministically uh, shadowing is we're going to use random and usually we use log normal distribution so these are random different from one environment to another and multipath is also go going to look as a random because it depends on the reflecting and the surfaces around so how to model this is our objective all right here are two quick questions the first one is just simple to connect so we have reflection transmission scattering diffraction and these are uh, unorganized so just uh, connect the right thing reflection transmission so please do the right connection the right mapping the second question requires some thinking between the transmitter and the receiver working at 2.4 gigahertz we're giving the frequency there is an object like a cube 
with a volume of 125 centimeter cube. Will this object cause reflection or scattering? So this size of the object must be compared to something. Please write your answers in the comment section. For the first question, write the full statements. For the second question, write with justification whether the object will suffer from reflection or scattering. Thank you.